Hi everyone, we're just gonna give it another minute to let everyone get settled in and then we have some great content to share with you this, this afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm L'Oreal Lance, your Member Services Director, and thank you so much for joining us for our May Member Webinar. Partnered with our friends at Optibus, we are so excited to have them along to tell us a little bit more about transit planning and scheduling to make sure that you, our members, have all the tools that you need to be successful. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the Optibus team. Thank you, L'Oreal, and greetings to everyone. Uh, good morning for some of you, good afternoon for some others, depending on where you are. Uh, my name is Mike Loeffler. I am the Regional Director of North America at Optibus. And today we're going to um, have a webinar focusing on, you know, your ability to be resilient uh, in the transiting and scheduling, in particular with some of these issues that you're addressed with right now, whether it's driver shortages, uh, rising fuel prices, uh, ridership recovery post pandemic and so on. Uh, joining me are two of my colleagues, both of whom are Optibus application engineers. Uh, we've got Max Leon and Diane Chiavetta on the line. Uh, they'll be leading the demo that we're going to do. Uh, a quick uh, Optibus overview. Uh, we are a software provider, uh, Transit Tech is our focus, and we offer a cloud native software platform that is used to plan and schedule transit service in over 1000 cities worldwide. Uh, essentially, it's an end-to-end -end solution that allows for you to do strategic and operational planning, optimizing your block and run cut scenarios, uh, developing quality rosters to ensure uh, high quality work packages for your drivers, and then we're soon to deploy a daily operations module that will allow dispatchers to modify driver assignments on the fly, track driver sign-in, payroll integration, and more. In terms of our agenda, uh, we'll take a quick, a quick little discussion or monologue, if you will, led by me, uh, talking about these pressing issues. Uh, again, rising fuel prices, driver shortages, and, and ridership recovery. I'll also share some discussions I've had with, with transit agencies all over the world, especially those here in North America. Uh, we'll then get into a demo of the platform so we can show how technology can be used to address these issues. Uh, and during the demo, if anybody has any questions, please type those into the chat feature and we'll address as many of those as we can after the demo. Uh, and then finally, we'll have a couple of surveys. In fact, let's pull that first survey up right now before we get into our discussion. And I believe you have the option to enter uh, more than one selection here in the event that you happen to use. Uh, two different tools, so feel free to enter multiple entries if that is indeed the case. We'll give it maybe another 15 seconds, and then we'll look at the results. Okay, good stuff here. 24% are using pencil and paper. That's really not uncommon. 37% uh, using Excel and 79% using software. So 
uh, that tells me that that many of you are using multiple uh, uh, tools. Uh, perhaps those who do pencil and paper are also using Excel, but a very good perspective there. So thank you for that. <laughs> so in terms of, you know, discussions with, with transit agencies and operators, uh, particularly all over North America, uh, the three things that come up again, fuel cost, driver shortages, and, and ridership recovery. And, you know, when it comes to fuel cost, to me, it seems like a double-edged sword. Uh, yeah, the rising fuel cost will certainly impact your budget, your operating budget, but there's evidence that it can also increase ridership uh, as, as fuel costs go up. It seems that motorists are often looking for a more cost-effective mode for travel, whether that's for leisure travel or work commute. So that can be good news. Uh, but it also seems that an agency's operating cost might increase proportionally greater um, in terms of expense than those expected ridership gains. In fact, I had read an APTA study uh, a few weeks back that concluded that for every 10% increase in fuel cost, the ridership gains are only between one and 4%. So not exactly what we'd call a, a, a zero sum gain, which is net neutral or even positive. Um, I'm aware that some agencies have like annual fixed rate contracts for fuel purchases. So if your operation happens to have that, then you've probably yet to feel the pain of these fuel increases. Uh, however, many of you probably don't have these annual fixed rate contracts uh, and that likely leads to a significant budgetary issue. I am in Chicago, and a recent conversation I had with an agency here in Illinois, they indicated that they're currently paying 70 cents more per gallon of, of diesel than they had budgeted for this year, and they'd already increased the budget to account for fuel increases. Uh, so that's quite a strain on their budget. My suspicion is that um, this might drive or motivate agencies uh, to accelerate uh, a transition to electric. Um, I suspect some of you already have electric vehicles, EVs in your fleet, uh, maybe others don't. Um, I do wanna call out, while we won't touch on it today, Optibus does have features to account for uh, electrification. Whether you're looking to determine where uh, you're going to place your charging infrastructure and how, how, how large that would be, uh, or which routes can be operated by an EV, we do indeed have tools to address all of that. Uh, the next key issue, of course, which is the, probably the biggest one out there right now, is driver shortages. I, I seem to have these discussions every day with Optibus partners uh, who face that issue. Um, you know, a lot of them talk about wage increases, but that doesn't solve everything. Uh, I've heard cases where agencies have increased the hourly uh, wage paid to drivers. They've offered recruitment and sign-on and sign -on bonuses, but it still hasn't greatly impacted the shortage. Um, it, it goes far beyond that. You know, I would argue that, that you know, driver morale uh, is a big issue with retention. For example, I've seen cases where a transit agency one of their routes might have a scheduled uh, travel time or run time of 30 minutes, but they know it historically takes 35 minutes. So what does that do to driver morale? Uh, it's got a really bad impact on it because if the drivers are recorded day after day uh, of not being on time, that really impacts morale. So, you know, certainly technology, as you'll see shortly, can be used to have much more accurate uh, running times uh, which therefore impacts on-time performance. I've also heard of agencies who have formed committees, uh, basically a feedback loop. So these committees might be comprised of bus drivers, planners, schedulers, and dispatchers. Um, and it really creates what I would call diversity of thought. Um, you know, in, in my career, uh, I've worked for organizations where um, there was no diversity of thought. Everybody felt the same way. And as a result, new ideas were never introduced. But when you have that kind of diversity uh, and you give drivers that feedback loop and they can comment on perhaps an upcoming service change, I think that feedback loop serves everybody, not the least of which would be the folks who use your system. And uh, finally, with this topic, in terms of recruitment processes, uh, I heard of uh, an agency in the state of Indiana that 
you know, they often receive uh, 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 applicants or applications from folks who have criminal convictions. Uh, and as a means to, to increase their pool of candidates, rather than outright rejecting these people, they're doing individualized assessments of these candidates um, because they've gotta be a lot more creative and open to who they can hire. Uh, and then I heard of an agency in Florida where uh, they relax their English proficiency requirements as a means to increase their pool of candidates. So it really shows agencies trying to be creative uh, in how they're trying to attract and, and retain their drivers. Uh, the final quick topic to review here is ridership recovery. Uh, I suspect that across the country, many of your, your networks are not back to their pre-pandemic levels, uh, but some are. I've heard many that, that have rebounded quite well. In fact, I had read an APTA study not long ago indicating that as of, I guess it was the end of March, that transit ridership was back to 62% of its pre-pandemic levels. Uh, however, I then read a study by McKinsey, uh, the big consultancy that concluded they expect roughly a 10 to 15% ridership shortfall that's going to persist for years to come. So I realized that every city varies in terms of how ridership has or has not recovered. Um, but Whichever happens to be the case, your, your ability to be resilient and agile when responding to these type of changes is really important. So whether you have to factor things like the increasing um, you know, uh, level of people working from home, uh, slow recovery post-pandemic, even though we could argue the pandemic's certainly not yet over, uh, but there's a lot to consider. Um, I'd like to thank a number of you who, in advance of this webinar, sent some feedback about what your current struggles are. Uh, some of you indicated that forced you to combine routes, and combining routes has led to longer run times, which is problematic for your already overburdened drivers. Uh, I commented about how driver shortages are impacting on-time performance. Uh, a few commented on how you wished you had better tools. Uh, for service planning as a means to, you know, better factor your budgetary challenges. Uh, and then others have said, we actually have ridership increases. We simply uh, cannot serve the public well enough given our driver resources. Um, so we'll address these matters during the demo, which we'll start in just a moment. But before we do that, let's please put up that second survey. Uh, and once again, feel free to make multiple selections if, if that applies. All right, give it a few more seconds. And here we go, 89% driver shortage, no, no surprise there. 51% slow recovery of ridership, rising fuel prices, yep, 55%. I suspect that some of you who did not check that option might indeed have these annual fixed right um, fuel contracts. And then we've got 15% um, who have concerns about uh, integration of EVs. So very good stuff. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen and I'll pass it over to my colleague, Max, to get the demo started. Uh, so Max, over to you, please. And, uh, you know, Max, we're going to take some time here and, and show folks how technology can be used to address these kinds of issues, right? How do we factor the, the uh, increasing fuel cost? How do we create service levels that, that best match what our local community uh, expects? versus the resources we have. So let's take a look in the software. For sure, Mike, thank you uh, for that introduction. And really understand what the pressing issues are at hand. And what we want to do is to provide an ability for you to be more agile in terms of kind of adjusting your service changes, especially when considering all the factors that we have at play right now with driver shortages, rising fuel costs, and everything that's ongoing. So let's take a little dive into what we can do to maybe address these issues. So what you see on the screen right now is our Optibus planning module. 
Uh, today, I'm going to focus on addressing some of the key kind of pressing issues and figure out some solutions that we might have. So at the very top right here, you'll notice that I have four um, different views right here. We have our first one. This is our map view. That's the current one we're on, where we can visualize our different routes. And second is where we can define our different patterns. Maybe we have some rapid bus lines as opposed to your local routes. Uh, and then we also have the ability to define different travel times and ultimately use all that information to build up a timetable. So all this comes before we even go into really scheduling our different services, but really plan out how we can best execute to ensure a certain level of service while factoring in all the considerations that we have. Now for a map view, what you'll see right away is currently I'm on um, a client that we're actually on doing right now, which is Madison County, just outside the St. Louis area. And at the very top right here, we can see we're currently on route number one. We can also define which day we're currently on. We are on whether it's on a weekday service or a weekend service, and we have the ability to define our inbound and outbound routes. On our left-hand side panel here, we can see all the different time points indicated in a solid blue, and also in the solid white are all our stops for this particular route. And so for this route, what you'll see is we're currently on a map view. We can visualize this information, but what we want to do is figure out how we can address some of the issues at hand. Now, moving on from our map view, what we want to do is maybe adjust some of our services to maybe factor in some driver shortage issues that we might have, or maybe schedule changes that we need to address. So I'm gonna jump into our timetable. So this is where you can visualize the different trips that you have planned out for one particular route. And we can see at the very top here, some, granular, some high level information on the key business information for this particular route. We can see the number of trips, the trips by pattern, as well as how many trips we're having for this particular hour. Now to the actual view we have on the interface, we have all our trips listed out by each of these rows. And then we have all the stops and time points across our different columns. What you'll see is that we have our different patterns listed out in the first column that we have here the different vehicle type, as well as the headway. Now, we know that maybe some of your services need to be adjusted to accommodate just the, the difficulty of finding sufficient amount of drivers or maybe just needing to adjust your service. So we'll go in here and we're gonna scroll down here and we'll see the different types of services uh, for these different trips that we have. Now, we might need to cut some of the service that we provide right now for this particular route and maybe reduce the number of trips. But you may ask, Max, how would you do this? How would you address this situation and define maybe which, which trips to remove? Now, within Optibus, what we can do is we're gonna introduce a new uh, ability to look into your ridership information. So what you see here is an example of our ridership feature where we can figure out maybe which areas and which stops have a higher amount of ridership for a particular route. So in this particular example, on our map view, what you'll see is different color coded uh, lines. So what it means is that and our maybe lighter shade in our yellow, that means there's a relatively low ridership as opposed to our key areas in here where we have a really dark red shade. Those are our key ridership zones. So this is based off of your APC data to have those passenger accounts and accommodate that. Now you might ask which particular time period should we address? So what you'll see on the right-hand side panel right next to your map view is essentially information regarding this particular route and we can toggle and adjust for it. Now on the bottom you'll see some key information 
on this particular row, including the total radish shift for this time period. Right now, I have set it at from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and this is during the midday. Now, you might want to know maybe because of COVID, now a lot of maybe your residents are working from home or just traffic patterns and transit patterns have been significantly uh, adjusted. And so how can we accommodate that? Now we'll look into our 11 to 2 p.m. now, but maybe we can see right now we're just under 5K in terms of ridership, but maybe we'll look into our PM peak from R3 to 6. We can see that now this is just slightly over 4K. So maybe for this particular route, we need to adjust it. Maybe we need to accommodate for this route and reduce the number of PM peak trips because now the ridership has significantly shifted and we need to accommodate that. So we'll go back into our planning view and maybe we'll reduce and remove some of the trips that we have listed here. So what I've done is I've selected a few of the trips that we have here during the PMP and I have removed. So we can simply remove it and adjust as we require. Yeah, really good stuff, Max. Let's consider something where we've got to get a bit more extreme. So perhaps rather than cutting trips, let's uh, cut a pattern. Maybe there's express service and we're going to, uh, we're going to cut that. For sure, Mike. And so for this particular route number one, what we'll see here is our current B and C are actually more of a route routes where they actually stop and last stop. So how can decipher that is that within the pattern view, we can see that for this one, it only goes through slightly less stops for our CMB as opposed to our pattern A. So we have our patterns listed out on the left hand side panel with our different stops list as well. So what we'll do is we're gonna go back into our timetable and really remove maybe some of the patterns that we have. So I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna filter out just our B and C rep and I'm gonna select all of them and remove them all as well. So what I'm going to do is remove all of them and then in our inbound as well, I will do the same. So I will select the B and C and ultimately remove these ones as well. Now you might ask me, well, it's great that you can make and you know, adjust these different trips within our planning, but what we really want to do is see how we can tailor our workforce to accommodate this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna transition into our planning, our scheduling module. And what you'll notice right away is at the very top here, we have this yellow bar. And what this means is that currently we have an unsynced schedule, meaning that we've made changes to planning. And the system is alerting us that we need to refresh and ensure that these changes are reflected within our scheduling module. So now that we've accommodated that, what we'll do is figure out how we can tailor this into our schedule. So at the very top here, we have two tabs. Currently, I'm on our vehicle view. We also have the ability to go into our crew schedule as well. And we will go into that shortly later. At the very top, we can see some business metrics into your overall transit service. We have the number of duties, including how many drivers do you need. We have our blocks, having a view of the number of vehicles you need, as well as the efficiency and the cost. To the actual interface, what we'll see is that we have our different trips listed out in each of the rows with all the time of day across uh, the column. And then each of these polygons represents a different trip. And each of these trips are color coded by the route. So it gives you that high level visualization right away. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, accommodate for some of these changes that we've made. So what I'm doing is that because we made those changes within our planning module, where we remove 
pattern B and C. Now we're factoring all those factors that we have right now and tailoring it so that we can see what the difference is between our initial uh, schedule that we had with maybe our full on route number one and compare that to our existing one that we have where we remove a couple of our patterns. Yeah, and we're doing, by the way, a real-time uh, optimization. We, we wanted to show you in the real world how quick this stuff really happens. So it's going to be done. Uh, it's probably been running for 15 seconds, probably another 10 or 15 seconds or so. So it does optimize very quickly. So it's, it's certainly a real-world situation here. For sure, Mike. And just as you said that, you know, we're about to finish, that was within seconds, and we can see right away what the impacts are. At the very top, we can see that we have green uh, letters as well as red ones right next to our original blue, where we can see the reduction or the improvements as well as maybe some that are slightly less um, right away. So we can see right away that we've reduced the number of drivers that we require by six and also the vehicle count by three. So because we made these changes, we can see right away what those impacts are when you remove a certain row or partially um, some of the patterns that may, they might have. Yeah, good stuff, Max. Let's get even, uh, let's go one step more extreme and let's consider that we need to eliminate a route altogether. Maybe ridership has become so, so varied on a certain route, we want to eliminate one altogether. Let's take a look at that. Sure, Mike. So now, we're gonna take a slightly more extreme measure, Mike, like you mentioned, maybe we have to reduce this entire route completely. Um, for this route, maybe it's a suburban area to a downtown area, and we realize that we might not necessarily need this where travel patterns have changed as ridership recovered. So we're gonna completely remove the route. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to delete the route completely. So what this does is that it will remove all the trips and we're gonna go back into our uh, schedule and again see how quickly we can accommodate uh, our new schedule because of that and again what it's doing it is ensuring that all the changes that we have made here are reflected in as well so i'm just going to quickly optimize and ensure that this is the latest and greatest for our schedule yeah. And while that's optimizing, after we complete this one, uh, let's also consider what we can do to add service, right? Some of the folks who are attending the webinar today indicated a few days ago that they're actually seeing ridership increases. So how do we accommodate that? So once we optimize here, let's take a look at how we can add trips to our service. For sure, Mike. And while we're taking a look there, I did want to highlight that we can accommodate um, our different runs as well. So those are our drivers. Um, sorry, these are, uh, yeah, these are our drivers so we can see the different shifts that they're ongoing. So now instead of having each of these rows represent a different vehicle, now each of these rows would represent a different driver. And we can see the different types of shifts, whether we have split shifts or regular shifts, et cetera. And so what, once again, at the very top, we can see what type of improvements we've made as a result of removing the entirety of route number one. So Mike, you mentioned a great point where some of the attendees we've seen maybe their, their ridership has maybe returned back and maybe they need to adjust to the changing dynamics of uh, their overall service. And maybe particular routes, they're seeing significant improvements. So let's imagine that route number eight, this is more of this local area and we've seen significant growth in the development um, for this area. There's a lot of people moving into this area. So as a result, maybe we have to increase the number of uh, trips that we have and increase the service for this particular route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our timetable again and maybe add in some new trips for this particular. I'm going to select the add button right here. 
And what I'm going to do is let's imagine that maybe we've seen a really significant growth and we need to double our service. We have to improve the frequency of this particular route. So starting in the morning around 8.48 to maybe in the evening at 5.48. So we're gonna set a headway at 60 minutes. And what it will do is that originally we had a headway of 60 minutes. Now we reduce that to 30 minutes. So this particular route has become more frequent and we are able to serve more individuals as a result. So because I've done it on the outbound as well, I'm also going to do it on the inbound to ensure that these changes are reflected as well. Yeah, and while Max is adding those um, inbound trips, I want to call out, and we certainly can't show all the features uh, during the webinar, but I want to call out that when you're, you know, whether adding trips or, or considering, you know, your, your headways at any given uh, time of day, you do have the ability to account for different run times or travel times. Certainly, uh, when, you, when this route is running, uh, the, the travel time during the AM and PM rush is going to be longer than it would be during non-peak hours. So you're able to indicate uh, how long those travel times are, whether it's between uh, time points or stop points or the route altogether, you can factor that. So perhaps the, the a trip in the morning is gonna take 45 minutes, but at 2 p.m. it might take 40 minutes. So all those inputs are factored into the optimization that you saw that Max did uh, a few minutes ago. Sure, Mike. And you made a really great point about um, adjusting the travel times here. So if I go into our travel times tab, we can see on the left-hand side here, we have different time bands as well as our start and end point. And then we have our total amount of time and duration from our start to end. Now, if we, let's say during the AM peak, we will add like a time band here from 6.30 to 10 AM. And we notice that for this particular time, just due to traffic, we've significantly increased it. We can adjust and accommodate as well, and we can shift it as we please. And let's say that we change it to 48 minutes, but we realize that some of this information is um, adjusted and maybe we don't have that PM or AMP travel time as significant anymore. If we need to make any adjustments, we can actually simply undo it as well. So we have the ability to undo and adjust as we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and see how this reflects back into our schedule. So we're going to sync it again. Um, and once again, I like to highlight that we are just working with one plan. And so we're making all these changes and you can make multiple different schedules and figure out what's best for your agency. So you can make multiple scenarios, compare it and see which one you want to implement. So I'm going to, again, optimize, ensure that all these trips are factored in. And what I wanna highlight is that we have a pencil button so we can see all those extra trips that we've actually added in at the very top here with the green polygons with the number eight on it. These are the extra trips that we've just added in that we need to factor in to our overall schedule. And again, what the system is doing is it's factoring all the different preferences that we've indicated. So, what I've shown you just now is just an example, but we have the ability to factor in all your union rules, all your work limitation rules, all your vehicle rules, and have those factored into overall um, ability of scheduling. Yeah. So think, we can right away see the impacts at the very top again, what this would mean to your overall service. Really good stuff, Max. Now let's, let's uh, factor the overwhelming issue, driver shortage. So let's take a look at how we can uh, modify the, the, the shift types or duty types uh, to account for driver resources. And at the same time, let's also take a look at how we can factor these, these increasing fuel prices, right? So we can, we can take a look at the, the cost per mile for each vehicle type, and we can increase that to account for these rising fuel prices. For sure, Mike.
That's an excellent question that you have here. So we have four main categories with where we can make those adjustments. What I mentioned before, those preferences to allow you to tailor it to your service. Um, and so those include our vehicles, anything from our layovers to our drivers, to our, um, adjusting for any work limitation, brakes, etc. Also our depots and miscellaneous, that's where we can adjust the cost. So let's imagine that maybe like you mentioned, cost of fuel is going up. We didn't fix the cost of that, but maybe we need to adjust for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into our costs and what we have here is our default vehicle with a daily fixed cost, as well as a distant units cost. So that's all the costs accommodating both your fuel, your maintenance, et cetera. Now we know maybe $2 is not enough. Maybe we need to increase it to accommodate for the rising fuel costs. So now it's maybe two and a half dollars. We're going to adjust for that. But we also might want to adjust for our driver shortage issue right now. We don't have significant amount of drivers that we previously had before, and maybe we need to accommodate that. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into our drivers and go into our different duty types and maybe accommodate this. So originally, we might have had a lot of part-time drivers where uh, a lot of drivers were doing a lot of short shifts, but now maybe we need to have the ability to increase the number of splits. So drivers need to maybe take on longer shifts to accommodate the driver issue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust for our shorts and our splits. And so what, how we can accommodate that with Optibus is to utilize a penalty system. So this is more of a weighting system with dollar amount where we're saying that the higher amount of penalty would result in a lower um, amount of this occurring. So because of that, I'm going to reduce this number of splits and then we will increase the amount of uh, part-time shoes. So again, we will go into a driver tab and we will optimize for our different duties that we have. So what the system here is doing is accommodating different preferences that we have. And we have a plethora of different preferences that we can select from. But then what we want to do also is tailor. So we have the ability to have a support team to help you tailor your um, information to best suit your agency's requirements. And just about done. And so at the very top here, you'll see right away that we've significantly reduced the number of drivers that we need. So now we only need 103 as opposed to 116 before. But you'll also notice that our total cost has increased. That's because we've made that adjustment to our overall distant units cost to accommodate for the rising fuel prices. Yeah, and Max, that might also account for overtime, right? It, it would be quite common that if we have fewer runs to perform uh, because of a driver shortage, there's a pretty good chance the optimization factored some overtime into those runs. So let's take a look at how we can uh, understand how much overtime is, is uh, in this schedule and how we can try to balance that. For sure. So. Again, we can tailor all the different duty types that we had before and accommodate the overtime within there. But then we can also look into our roster module, which I'll provide a high level overview. And that's where we take these daily schedules and accommodate into our weekly uh, overview. So what you'll see here is our roster module. This is what I've taken with our daily schedules. I accommodate that into our uh, overall roster. So we built out for that entire week. At the very top here, we can see additional information on the number of rosters we have, as well as the paid time. And that overtime information is listed right away at the very top. And we can see the different um, shifts that we have on the very bottom, listed out for each of these rows, and we have a day of the week. Now, 
For this particular webinar, we won't go too deeply in here, but I just want to mention that we can accommodate for your overtime rules, and we will go into more depth into our rostering and how we can accommodate that at a workshop in Louisville. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, you know, it comes down to a balancing act, right? There are service levels you desire to provide, but you've got to balance that with your driver resources, uh, budgetary concerns, the extent to which you can uh, allow overtime. And, and the impression we've hoped to have made here um, is that you can really easily modify anything, whether it's trips, routes, uh, duty types, whatever it is, uh, and then quickly optimize. And those KPIs, right, we show all the KPIs with the delta, right? The delta is the difference between the new scenario and your baseline scenario. So it allows your team to make really, you know, really quick scenarios, evaluate them, and make informed decisions. Hey, Max. There was also a few folks who, who told us in advance of today's webinar that the driver shortage is impacting their on-time performance. Kind of like what I mentioned um, early on in this session, that you know, if the scheduled run times uh, are not realistic, that's gonna impact driver morale. So let's take a look at our predictive run times feature and how we can you know, better analyze on-time performance. For sure, Mike. You mentioned a great point where we want to have high quality rosters and attract you know, great drivers and also retain drivers. And a lot of times it's maybe they can't make these runs that they're taking on, maybe these shifts that they're not making the time, time points that they've uh, been indicated and you no know, driver morale isn't great. So how can we accommodate that? So this is our predictive runtime feature. Um, and what, I want to showcase is how we can accommodate to adjust your overall schedule to ensure that these uh, run times that you have, these times, these arrival points are um, reasonable and that these drivers aren't trying to rush to make them. And so now we're going to make some adjustments and all this information is accommodated from a CAD ABL information to be able to reflect that from a historical standpoint. So what you'll notice again is that we're back in our timeline. Now for this timeline, you'll notice that we have three more roles or three more columns that weren't there previously. So right uh, next to our running time right here, we have our OTP, destination OTP, as well as our confidence level. So this is where we can make these adjustments to our uh, run times and to be able to make and predict how we can best accommodate your actual schedule. So for three information for, uh, columns that we have here, our OTP, that's our on-time performance. So that is between time point to time point where we can accommodate that to analyze whether or not we're actually making it. So we're saying that 91% of the time, we're actually making from time point to time point. And what that destination type OTP is and how that differs from our OTP is where we can have our start to end. So the destination is from our origin to our end destination and whether or not we're making that. So we're actually doing quite a good job for this particular trip that we have. Now our confidence level, that is based on the data that we have, the higher, star rating that we have means that we have maybe more data and we're more confident with the data that we have. So if I scroll on the bottom here, we'll notice that it is quite high. But maybe during this particular time in the midday, we're not really getting those on-time performance that we wish for. So how can we adjust for that? So I'm going to go into here and I'm going to select um, all our trips here. And we have a branch button. And this is where we can adjust the different trip times. And this is based off your CAD ABL data. So I'm going to define our on-time performance percentile goal as 90%. And then we also have the ability to adjust, let's say, particular time points as well, where we need to make this in particular. Let's say we have to get to the hospital by a certain time. And we want to make sure that that's on time. We can make that as well. 
So for this particular example, I'm going to just simply adjust for our trips and ensure some of our trips that may not necessarily have the same on time performance as before have a higher ratio. So again, it's factoring all the information that we have historically and accommodating that. So on our actual interface now, you'll see that we have on the side here with all our different times for these different stuff that we have, and we've adjusted for it. Anything in white is original, anything in orange, we've adjusted for it. So we can see all the different ones that we've adjusted. And now, instead of having our on top performance in our 70s, now we have our 80s to 90 percentile. So this is one way we can ensure that the arrival times for our, all our trips are reasonable and we have a high morale for our uh, drivers. Nice work, Max. All right, Max, do me a favor, stop sharing and I'll take it back to, uh, to my screen. Okay, thanks again and great job, Max. Um, so as Max mentioned, uh, Octopus will be uh, in Louisville next week for the CTAA Expo. Uh, in fact, we're doing a workshop uh, Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. Uh, and that's going to focus much more deeply on the driver shortage issue. We touched on that today, uh, but we'll dive much more deeply during that workshop. Uh, we'll even take a look at how tools for daily dispatch and operations can be used, whether it's you know modifying driver assignments on the fly or covering open shifts. That's really important, especially in this period of, of you know, ongoing driver shortages. Um, if any of you who are on this webinar uh, will happen to be at the event in Louisville next week, if you have any interest in joining us on stage, in fact, I don't think there's gonna be a stage, but <laughs> the room that we're gonna be in, if you wanna join us um, and we could use your data and, and essentially your, your data would become a, a quasi case study during our workshop, we'd love to have you. So uh, if, you're, if you're interested, please email us at info at octobus.com. Uh, we'll respond as soon as we can and determine if uh, this is something we can do. If nobody raises their hand, that's okay. We still have great stuff to show, but it would really be a great, you know, real world, uh, you know, useful case study uh, if one of you, a particular one of you who's got uh, fixed route service uh, would want to join us again not up on stage but you know up in the front of the room um also if anybody wants more inter or more information uh on the octobus driver shortage uh, ebook you can go to the website which is octobus.com uh then go to resources and ebooks uh and you'll see that there uh and if anybody wants more information on octobus you can also contact us at info at octobus.com um, looks like we have a question or comment in here. Uh, what is the data requirements for the predictive OTP analysis? Are you working with CAD AVL providers or perhaps feeding in from a GTFS? Uh, the answer is yes, but I'll defer to Max for a more technical response. Yeah, Mike. So great question there. Uh, so far, predictive runtimes, we are using CAD AVL vendor information. Um, and it's honestly dependent on the information that you have. As we input that information, we will be able to get a better feed and that's that confidence level. And that's how um, confident we are for particular trips. And we've been working with multiple different caveat vendors to ensure um, that this information is accommodated for. Yeah, and ultimately we want that to be via an API. So it'll be a, a seamless process. Okay. Well, I'm happy to say that we uh, kept this within our uh, time allotment. You know, sometimes things run late, but I think this flowed quite smoothly. So again, for those of you who are going to be in, in Louisville next week, um, you know, if you have time, please join our workshop 1030 uh, a.m. on Tuesday in room L015. Uh, we will also have uh, an exhibit booth in the uh, expo hall. So feel free to stop on by. Um, some of you might already have our world famous Optibus socks. Uh, if you don't have a pair, uh, please come by and, and get them. I know some of the folks at CTAA have them and they, uh, they love them. So please stop by. 
say hello and learn a bit more about Optibus. And uh, L'Oreal, back to you. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Max. And it looks like Gary has a CC and so does Kate on how great those socks are. If you look in the chat, Mike and Max. Uh, thank you to the team at Optibus for hosting this May member webinar. It was very insightful and I hope that people will continue to learn a little bit more about all of the resources and tool that Optibus has to offer. As Mike mentioned, they will be around kind of everywhere next week in Louisville. And I hope to see each and every one of you who registered for this webinar at Louisville for our Expo 2022. It is shaping up to be a really fabulous event. Looks like we'll be at right around 900 registrants, which really has blown us away since this is our second um, expo in six months. So we can't wait to see you all there in Louisville. And don't forget to come with your big night out gear for Churchill Downs. Thank you again to Optibus and have a good rest of your afternoon. Thank you, everyone.